Hello, and welcome to Breaking It All Down. I'm Count Zero. It's been a while since I've done one of these shows, as far as the actual Breaking It All Down, Breaking it all down review show, and while I had planned to do a review of Call of Duty Advanced Warfare as a follow-up to my Let's Play, I still have a copyright strike pending from the gameplay footage for that game, so while I wait for that strike to clear up, I'm going to do a film review. And in particular, a review of a film that I've been meaning to review since last year, but hadn't got around to doing because of my senior project. Also, it's in a genre I've done prose reviews of on my blog, but not video reviews, specifically documentaries. That film is The Acre Monster Chronicles. Now, I should say, in accordance with Federal Trade Commission regulations, that I received a copy of this film for purposes of review directly from someone involved in the making of the film, along with the studio's other documentary, which I will review at a later date. I received these copies at no cost for purposes of review, and I have received no compensation or other incentive, one way or another, related to my opinion on the review. That's probably for the best, since while I enjoyed this film, I'm not exactly sure that I'd recommend it. Documentaries are, when all is said and done, essays. They can be informational, persuasive, or both. Generally, they need to hit three important beats. What happened? Why did it happen? Why should the audience care? Those can be in any order, and the why should they care part can be anything from a call to action, like with an inconvenient truth, or just an idea about how cool this thing is, or was, like with Men on Wire, or the impact a thing has had, like Ken Burns' National Park's America's Best Idea. With a documentary profiling a person, like the Acre Monster Chronicles, the goal is to show who the person is, if you haven't heard of him before, show a portrait of their life, and what impact the person has had. This documentary doesn't quite pull that off. The problem with this documentary, The Acre Monster Chronicles, is structural. Most documentaries, whether it's an episode of Frontline to a feature film, use narration to connect the interview segments together and help lay out its case. The Acre Monster Chronicles doesn't do that. Instead, it links together interview sequences from various people who knew Forrest J. Ackerman and were influenced by him and his magazine, Famous Monsters of Filmland. And that's pretty much all the film does. There's some structure there, but the remembrances aren't exactly chronological. We get some bits about Forrest's introduction to science fiction before he learn about, we learn about his childhood. We learn a bit, few bits about how Forey and Ray Bradbury first met, and how Forey and Ray Harryhausen first met. We get lots of stuff about famous monsters of Filmland, and how screenwriters like Dan O'Bannon and John Landis and Joe Dante were inspired by it. However, the order of these anecdotes aren't really structured in any way to provide a coherent narrative. I describe it like going to the birthday party of a person with a bunch of great friends, and hearing stories about the person. The people doing the remembering and telling the stories are less interested in telling you the chronological life story of the person in any really coherent order, and more interested in just telling cool stories. Between the interviews with Forey himself, along with the various people who were friends of the Acre Monster or influenced by him and his work, you get the vibe that each story has a kind of unspoken preface of, hey, what about that time when? Now, when you're being brought to the birthday party of someone you don't know by a friend, you don't need to know who is this guy in advance. You're already two degrees removed. You know someone who either knows the bir person whose birthday party it is, or knows someone else there who said they got the invitation. So when you're persuaded to go to the party, or when you're driving there, you've got your friend who's in the car with you, telling you how cool this person is, giving you the little groundwork you need to know for why you're going to this party. A documentary, profile documentary, on the other hand, is like getting an unsolicited, unsolicited information, invitation in the mail to the birthday party of someone you don't know personally. You don't have that friend to make the introductions at the party to tell you about this person and how they're cool and how you'll love to meet them on the way there. You either already know who the person is, in which case you're their man, at least if it's someone you like or think is cool, or you don't know who they are, and you're on the fence. What this documentary needs at the start of the film is a one moment 
where the filmmaker or one of the interviewees says something like this. Forrest J. Ackerman is, and was, a fan's fan. While he wrote and published some science fiction horror stories, but published uh, more as far as through his magazine, his importance to science fiction and fantasy fandom, and fandoms as a whole, not just like your, like, in science fiction and fantasy, but fandoms beyond that, horror, to, um, to niche fandoms related to television shows, um, is as a fan. He came to the first World Science Fiction Convention in the 1930s dressed as a spaceman in quite possibly the first instance of cosplay, though nobody called it that at the time. He was close friends with one of the greatest science fiction writers of the 20th century, Ray Bradbury, and one of the greatest film directors and special effects artists of the 20th century, Ray Harryhausen, and the two met each other through Forey. Perhaps more importantly than Forrest's science fiction stories is he wrote several fanzines and then ended up creating a magazine called Famous Monsters of Filmland. And this magazine inspired and influenced generations of fans of science fiction, fantasy, and horror. It was one of the first science fiction enthusiast magazines that wasn't born as a literary magazine, one that published short stories or serialized novels like Analog and Galaxy. Through the success of Famous Monsters in Filmland, we got Starlog, we got Fangoria. You can make the case, and I would, that video game magazines like Electronic Gaming Monthly and Nintendo Power, comics magazines like Wizard, and even anime magazines like New Type and Animage in Japan, as famous monsters had interna international circulation, and Otaku USA in the US, are all branches from the trunk that is famous monsters of Filmland. Forrest J. Ackerman is the ur example of a person who went... I am going to make a living at being a fan, and did it. Aside from all the print magazines um, and all the fan si the, the fan news sites like IO9 or Bureau 42 or heck, um, Bleeding Cool News um, and comic book resources, there. The, Aker, the the legacy of the Acre Monster, the legacy of Forrest J. Ackerman, lives on through internet enthusiast critics like Linkara, like Movie Bob, like Nash, heck, even like the nostalgia critic, the angry, angry video game nerd, and if I may get super pretentious, even me, at my very tiny end of the spectrum, on my really small viewer base. Though the rest of the people on the list I just gave are far more successful than I am, and Frankly, Forrest J. Ackerman was far more successful than us all. We are all bound together by a common desire. We love a medium of artistic expression. Science fiction and fantasy literature, films, video games, comics, or all of the above. And we want to share that love with the world. This can be through showing examples of how our preferred art form fails, whether it's through Angry Video Game Nerd or Linkara's show, though Linkara's starting to move more towards reviewing good comics through, through his Patreon, or showing examples of works that succeed, like Movie Bob's really, really that good, or Nash's um, There Be Dra There Be Dragons, though that shows kind of in the middle because it covers both sides of the spectrum. But the short version is this: the, the TLDR is this. Forrest J. Ackerman changed the world, not by creating a cancer cure, not by a big scientific discovery but by changing the way people interact with fan, with, with, with art, by changing who's writing about art, and in a way, opening it up to a whole new market of people, that you don't have to be a film critic at a major newspaper to write or criticize film, that you don't have to be a... You, you, you don't have to be inside in the industry, connected to everyone, to be someone who cares about an art form and shares it with the world through fanzines, magazines, and ultimately later, though he wasn't necessarily involved with this, blogs or YouTube videos like this one. So in conclusion, if you already know who Forrest J. Ackerman is, if you know who the Aker Monster is, you will certainly find this documentary interesting, with, with all the stories of Ackerman, his life, and how his work inspired people. Same thing if this blurb I just gave caught your interest. 
That said, if you want a more structured documentary, something along the lines of, well, on Wire, of stuff on PBS, or if Ackerman doesn't sound interesting to you, you may want to give this a miss. The studio has one more documentary, and this one's of a person I haven't heard of before. I will review that at some point in the future, and see if that one is a more structured view. Until next time, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please support my Patreon. Um, link will be in the show notes, or in or the URL will be in the credits. Or if you are viewing this on my YouTube channel, it will be over here, somewhere above the video on the channel page. Um, there will also be a pledge link as well, direct donation link. So next week, another uh, next week will be the next part of Nintendo Power Retrospectives, and the week after that, another review. And hopefully I'll have a little less fan noise in the background because things will have cooled down some. So until next time, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.